the restoration of the lost interdental papilla. In nature, we notice when something is missing. Now, using microsurgical techniques, we have the ability to restore lost papilla. To close the interproximal space, we are generally concerned with three possible approaches. The first method is orthodontic root approximation to close or pinch down the tissue space. Proper root alignment causes space closure and a pinching down of the interdental tissue. Incisal edge wear will become more obvious, necessitating restoration. Another method involves restoratively changing the tooth shape. A third approach is a surgical addition, which is what we will demonstrate in the animation. Here is a cosmetic defect in the maxillary anterior. Here is a healed result using my new microsurgical technique. This technique will be described and detailed in our animation. The animation should allow for easy understanding of the nuances of the surgical technique. First, the doctor should classify the defect. Using the nordland tarnow classification system, we can determine just how much change can be accomplished with any papilla regeneration technique. The classification system, as published in the Journal of Periodontology, details different levels of papilla loss. A normal interdental papilla fills the embrasure space to the apical extent of the interdental contact point. A class 1 papilla, the tip of the interdental papilla, lies between the interdental contact point and the most coronal extent of the interproximal CEJ. A class 2 papilla has the tip of the interdental papilla lying at or apical to the interproximal CEJ, but coronal to the apical extent of the facial CEJ. A class 3 papilla the tip of the interdental papilla lies level with or apical to the facial CEJ. Here you can see the typical 7A scalpel handle with the 15 blade. Using a straight scalpel necessitates releasing incisions and larger incisions. You can get a sense of the large size of the classic 15 scalpel when we compare it to the new micro scalpel blades. This particular blade is the Nordland 6900 blade. The mounting of the scalpel blades is quite different from that of traditional blades. The newer scalpel blades mount on a rounded handle. Because nothing in the body is straight, the N6900 blade can be modified using orthodontic bending pliers to be able to create new shapes and contours. Here you can see the modification of the N6900 blade using the orthodontic bending pliers creating some of the typical contours we might expect to use with our surgical procedures. Previous flat blade handles did not allow for the use of small muscle rotation and encouraged the use of larger muscles with more inaccuracies and movement. Round handles use small muscle rotations and create more precise scalpel movement. First measure the desired gingivo incisal height. In that way you can tell the amount of total needed tissue for the final result and how much volume of tissue will be needed to be harvested from the donor site. Usually I will start with the scalpel unmodified. A sulcular incision should be extended circumferentially around the adjacent teeth to the crest of bone. Later the scalpel will be modified to form a J-hook contour. 
A split thickness die section is used on the facial with a second customized angled blade. Papilla mobility is achieved through a split thickness die section under the facial tissue extending up through the attached keratinized gingiva past the mucogingival junction. The doctor must evaluate the amount of tissue needed and choose a donor site with adequate tissue dimensions. The desired gingival incisal height to be augmented must be measured ahead of time. Once adequate donor tissue is harvested, a lasso suture is used to pull the tissue into position under the undermined papilla space. A composite restorative material has been placed at the contact point to support the suspensory suture. A suspensory suture is essential to position the graft and keep the recipient tissue from retracting due to the pressure of the lips and musculature, such as the orbicularis oris muscle. I recommend avoiding metal and plastic interdental cleaning devices. A surgical dissecting microscope will enhance the visibility in this tiny microsurgical environment.